Now, end to end encryption. You've written about this recently, um, as if I it have, was here. Sure. Um, yeah, let's let's move from something depressing, security related. <laughs> uh, you know that the entire internet is apparently on fire. To move to some good news, right? Yep. For for decades, I've been a proponent of having end to end encryption on user endpoints. So you should be able to secure your traffic on your devices or your you know your endpoints before it leaves the machine. And Microsoft has provided that with the end to end encryption calling features in teams for one on one calls, right? And, yeah. and really, as we've talked about before, the blocker here is if you want to use the capabilities of teams that require it to route your traffic through the service to do something like transcription or call recording or uh, what have you, yeah, um, to get a mode, call, et cetera. If, yeah. if you want to do those things, then you have to give up the end to end encryption because when you and I have an end to end encrypted call and you can tell from the state of the little shield icon next to the call timer in the call window. When that's on, that means that your call is being encrypted directly between the two parties who are in the call. Yeah. Microsoft can't see that traffic. Nobody else in, in the communication path that manages to weasel in there and tap uh, taps your traffic can read it. But that also means the service can't see it, so the service can't add any value to it. And that's really the conundrum that we face right now is there's this tension between, on the one hand, I want better security. So when I'm talking to my CEO and we're talking about buying Microsoft, I don't want Microsoft to be able to listen in. Uh, okay, great. But then if I want to add Steve to the conversation so he knows what we're doing, then I can't do that without eliminating that end-to-end -end encryption. Yeah, You could sort of work around that. Microsoft, if they wanted to, could implement a sort of end-to-end-to-end -to -end -to -end encryption for three people or five people. But there comes an upper limit. We're managing the keys and the, the key generation mechanisms and the other uh, plumbing that you have to do to do that just becomes prohibitive. And so I think they're on the right track. They delivered what they said they would, which is two-party end-to-end encryption for voice video calls. That's what yeah. they promised that they've given us. It works very unobtrusively, uh, and it does what it says on the tin. So, yeah, and as you say, it's not it's not the transport of it. So even in a normal Teams meeting, we're in a one at the moment. Then it it's you know it, it does have the a shield that says it's secured by data encryption. Um, yes. And if you were doing a call, me and you across the network, uh, you know, we're on the same LAN segment, we've been able to, much like with, with Skype for Business and Link, the call is going direct. Um, then you wouldn't be able to interfere with that easily anyway without compromising at least one half of that that end-to-end -end conversation. Um, and then rewriting you'd have to do a, an enormous amount of work to be able to sniff in that traffic across a lab um or even between you know two people where it's not going through the microsoft service uh right but it is it is that fact that it needs to be decrypted once it hits that endpoint when it is in a meeting and, and if a normal call is going through that then it's that's that's going to happen because it's really that that wrap around it rather than the, the traffic right. itself there, there are two two benefits or, or side effects of this kind of technology that oftentimes people don't think about, but that are worth discussing in this context. So one is the more broadly this is used, the more useful it is, right? So if you have to manually go turn it on, um, it is less useful because that depends on users knowing that they have to turn it on and being willing to turn it on and being willing to say, oh, wait, that's right. We were going to add Steve to the conversation. Now I have to turn it off or we have to start a new call or whatever. Mm. So having policy support that says by default, I want this to be turned on is yeah. important. Now, obviously, there are countries, I'm not naming any names, but there are certainly countries where they do not want or will not permit services to offer this level of encryption. And so that's that's a, um, a non-technical requirement that Microsoft has to negotiate. But the other thing that's uh, that I encourage our listeners – to think about in the context of end-to-end -end encryption is what you're doing when you use it is you are raising the bar for an attacker, right? If you think about what a well-resourced attacker who is attacking your company or your government or your, you know, pick, pick your group. Uh, one of the things that larger scale attackers have the ability to do is hoover up large volumes of conversation and yeah. try to decrypt, right? 
if everybody or, or if many people in that target population are using end-to-end -end encryption, then that raises the bar. It means that attackers have to be either um, much more sophisticated or much better resourced to do that same level of collection. And so you eliminate attackers who might casually try to eavesdrop on network traffic. Now, that does not mean that you're safe against the FBI or GCHQ or DGSE or pick your government agency. Because just to cite one example, if the National Security Agency wants to tap my traffic and they can't listen to it in teams, they're going to send some lady in a ninja suit out to my yard one night when I'm asleep, and she's going to put a microphone in my office, and they're still going to get my traffic. Well, right? so it's it's not it's not a panacea, but it raises the bar. I mean, t t t uh, you you hopefully don't don't feel inclined to follow politics in the UK. I'm not going to get into any of the do's or why's <laughs> or whatever's net right now. But you know, the, the news this week, you know, um, according to the ministers, a Teams all Zoom call was a basically a virtual quiz with the Prime Minister on it. Um, well, that, that managed to leak out from the, the from, from 10 Downing Street, a picture of that, you know, someone taking a screenshot of that and then, then sending it over. End-to-end -end encryption wouldn't have sold that either um, for, for them, unfortunately. Um, and there's, and I, I think that point where it is, sometimes it, it's a, a worry for companies who may well be subject to investigation because of what their clients do or what they are doing and right. and do want to have basically a secure line for certain conversations but it is the usability of that and that expectation that um you know if, if you're watching um you know a series like succession or something like that where it's a you know a media conglomerate that's being investigated by the department of justice um then that would be a case where certain calls might well be investigated. Uh, customers who are concerned about the Cloud Act and want to be able to use these services but can't because of that rare possibility that this might happen. And it's it, it's adding on to those that tool set or, or perhaps ticking the boxes is, is the right word at this point. Um, but it's it's almost as if really the, the end solution is going to be a... Um, so a, a local uh, media um, controller for for that, you know, hosting meetings locally. You know, it's going to be your, your only solution that ever ever meets every single bar that people want. Um, but I suppose that's going to wait until Teams gets to a certain level of meetings where there's very very few changes before you can have a an evergreen model for for deploying stuff, or you end up with quite a high bar on deploying that um that service where they've got to have as your stack hci or, or something like that as a prerequisite a bit like a bit like running avd on-prem which was something that's coming again makes sense could be possible but will it happen so you, you have to be a very unusual organization to want to do to to do that and be very very desperate to use teams um for those meetings Right. And for the kind of people who are concerned about that, right, when I think from a broad security perspective, if I were the U.S. Department of Defense, for example, I would be much more concerned about people joining Teams meetings from home using seven or eight year old Wi-Fi access points that have never been patched and have default passwords. Yeah. Well, I'd be a lot more worried about that than I would be about somebody intercepting a Teams media stream and decoding it in real time. And just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's some truth to what you say about this being a checkoff feature because Zoom has done it for a while and yeah. Microsoft wanted to do it too. And sometimes I like to you know, pull Microsoft's tail a little bit about that sort of thing. But in this case, it, it's a valuable, it's a useful feature. I'm glad they've got it. I, I want to see them continue to develop it and add more functionality to what you can do in that end-to-end -end encrypted envelope. Yeah. Uh, because I think it's, you know, it's, it's a social good, if you will, to have this capability. Now, speaking of things that are good, Yes. I really, I, every time I see Microsoft say that they're improving search in some way, I want to believe, Steve. I really do, man. I want to see the improvements in search because – 